Hello everyone, this is Phil with Philosophy. In today's video, we're going to talk about something very important, very dear to my heart, and something that I take very seriously, and that is, what does jujitsu do for mental health? Why is jujitsu so great for mental health? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is, you know, I didn't know that answer for a long time, and it bothered me a lot. I was in a sense of despair. I wasn't in a mentally healthy place, and you know, I couldn't find anything. I'd go on podcasts and YouTube videos and articles, and they'd be like, oh, jujitsu is great for losing weight. It's great for physical dexterity. It's addicting, and it's so much fun, but few people talked about the mental health aspect, and so, you know, even the few that did, they kind of touched upon it in a, I guess you would say a scientifically nerdy way, you know, about, oh, when you do this move, then it enhances these neurons. And then when you do this move, then it activates this part of the brain. And it was sort of like, you know, can you just explain it to me in a, I guess, dumbed down way? And I also was looking for a firsthand experience of somebody. I wanted to know somebody's journey, how, how it changed them. And that's what I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to tell you my journey. So my first disclaimer is going to be, First of all, I'm really fucking long-winded, and I am going to tell you about how I transformed myself. So the first part of this video is going to be my journey, and then the second part is going to be what jujitsu does for mental health right away. So if you just want the answer right away, I would skip ahead to like 15, 16 minutes. Anyways, that's the first disclaimer. Second disclaimer, and this is the most important one, okay? If you're watching this, you probably are like me. You probably either have anxiety, depression, bipolar, or panic attacks. I'm not a medical professional, but what I will tell you right now, right off the bat, I order you to do jujitsu. I fucking order you. That's a fucking order to do jujitsu, okay? I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're obese, if you're shy, if you don't like sports. It will change your fucking life. And I'm telling you, I'm here to spread good. It will change your life. All of those people that I explained, obese, shy, not into sports, awkward, have panic attacks, they were all in my dojo and they were getting better because of jujitsu. And so will you. So many jujitsu uh, gyms are a month to three free trial. So why not try something free? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm one of you. When I was in my deepest, darkest places, if I saw an ad that said, hey, we got a new, uh, you know, solution for depression, run around in a leopard thong and throw chocolates at people, I would do it because I have nothing to lose and I feel horrible. So why not try jujitsu? I'm telling you, do it. The last thing I'm going to say about that is I have a therapist that I go to and he said, like I said, I'm not a medical professional, but I can only give you the knowledge that I know, and this is true. He told me that he had nine clients that quit on him. They stopped seeing him because they found out about jujitsu. What does that tell you? Okay. Now, let's get right to it about my journey. Okay. It all kind of peaked my darkest moment in January 2021. In the year 2020, I had the worst possible year you can imagine. It was the darkest place I've ever been in in my entire life. And I truly, the 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 yin-yang side of that, the, the, the good part of that is that I don't think it'll ever get that bad because of how bad it was. Um, I had four people in my family die in that same year. I was a victim of a hit and run, victim of a battery. One of my pets died and a close family member of mine got diagnosed with ALS and it progressed very quickly. And by that, I mean, before lockdown, they had, there were 120 pounds and you couldn't even tell that they were ill. After lockdown, they were 70 pounds. They had a feeding tube and they can't speak anymore because they don't have any control over their jaw. So they need a strap that keeps their jaw up and they communicate through a dry erase board. So I had to see all of that, all of that, and it broke me as a man. It fucking broke me. It was too hard to deal. Not to mention on top of all of that was the COVID lockdown. You know, people who are trying to move up in their careers and you just got to put it all on pause. And, you know, sitting at home alone in the dark, 
depressed thinking about all the things that happened to me, it just it just drives you deeper and deeper into darker places. So the thing that drove me the most insane that I have to mention was that people who go through tragedy like I did, they do horrible things. They they go out and they cheat on their spouse they fuck a million people or they or they drink themselves to death or they they do a shit ton of different drugs like to try and cope with their trauma and me i was like no i'm gonna do the right thing and i started off with supplements i tried cbd ashwagandha l-theanine kava um kratom and none of them worked none, none of them were they would work like a week or two and then they they fizzled out you know and then I was, I was, I was telling my family, I'm like, I, what am I supposed to do? I'm in a really bad place. And they said, we really think you should see a psychiatrist. So I went to see a psychiatrist and he put me on five different meds in the course of like seven months and they made me worse and they made me worse. I developed like these phobias and paranoia that I never felt before in my life the side effects were horrible. I gained like 40 pounds. It was, it was horrible. It was making me worse. And finally, January, 2021 comes around. And you know, like I mentioned, I felt like I fell into this sinkhole and I just kept falling and falling and falling. I'm trying to grab onto rocks and cliffs and, and spiky ass fucking pebbles and shit. And I just keep falling. Nothing is stopping. It's just getting worse. And I told myself, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm sitting at home. I'm not going outside. I'm not turning the lights on. I'm not eating well. I need to fucking take the first step towards my recovery. And I'm going to do that. And what I did was is I got a job. I got a job at this uh, warehouse where it was like spur it sporadically gets fast and slow because it was like they would drop off these Japanese factory parts. So you had to quickly unload them and then you got to wait till the next truck. So there's nothing to do. So it was up and down, you know, and I was in one of those moments where it was slow and I'm sweeping up the shop. And all I had, you know, there was nothing to do other than think about all the devastating things that happened to me. So I'm sweeping up the shop and I'm just thinking, I'm overthinking and catastrophizing of everything that happened to me in the past year. And I collapsed and I had a panic attack. I was on the ground in like a fetal position, trembling and crying. And my boss is like, what's wrong with you? What's going on? What happened? And I told him and he goes, well, you know what? I'm really sorry, but we're going to have to let you go. I'm like, are you shitting me? I'm, I'm trying to build my life together. This was my first step and you're going to let me go. He's like, yeah, yeah, you, you, I'm sorry. You, you're not mentally stable here. So I, I lost it. I went to my therapist. I'm like, listen, I fucking, I give up. I give up on life. I, I seriously give up. This is not a joke. There is, it, it doesn't get any better than this. I'm, I'm, I don't want to live a life of suffering. I'm, I'm, I'm done being me. And he's like, all right, I need you to immediately get a psychiatric evaluation. I'm like, all right, I guess this is the next step, you know? So I went to my local hospital. I got a psychiatric evaluation and they asked me three, three main questions, which is number one, are you, have you ever thought about and planned out any possible way of harming yourself? I said, no. And then the next one is, have you ever thought of or planned out seriously any way of harming other people? I said, no. Then they said, have you ever thought of wanting to fall asleep and never wake up? And I'm just like, the whole year? Like every single day for the past year? Yeah. And that's what got me in because I, I really meant it. I mean, like every single, I couldn't believe that they had that as a question, a question on their questionnaire because I felt that every single day I would wake up devastate myself with everything that happened to me in the past year. And I was looking forward to nothing but going to sleep. Sometimes I would go to sleep at 4 PM and just sleep 14 hours because I, I didn't want to deal with life. I didn't want to deal with it. And so they let me in now for anybody who doesn't know what a PHP, it was a PHP depression outpatient program in the hospital. For those of you who don't know what that is, 
it's basically when you get admitted for say a suicide attempt then you get impatient you get you're in the hospital you have to live there and you have no you can't leave it's kind of like i think what bam margera went through i was outpatient because i wasn't a harm to myself and what I kind of call it is it's like a support group boot camp is what I call it. Now, I don't want to offend anybody. I think support groups are bullshit. From my experience, what I, what I experienced was bullshit. And what that was is I went to a room with 10 people. One person's telling me they got raped as a child. Next person's telling me they got molested. Next person's telling me that they got raised in a cage for three years in their childhood. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like, how is this supposed to make me feel better? You know, we're sharing our sadnesses. You know, we have these sad energies within ourselves. And then and instead of keeping them or healing them, we're just spreading them on to others. Like, I, 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 I couldn't do that. It wasn't for me. So, PHP depression program is, it's more scientific and it's emotionally detached. What that means is they give you all these scientifically proven ways to cope with everything. You know, like they would have a, so so basically the the way they explain it is imagine how how well seeing a therapist once a week for an hour is. Well, now PHP program is 3 months and you see somebody for 8 hours a day Monday through Friday. So and you and you learn these things. You basically they say you build this toolkit of you know. For example, if you have anxiety, then you go to the cognitive triangle, which is you know, you think of the three things, which is what are your behaviors, what are your thoughts, what are your emotions, and you need to separate all of them. You know, like you may be thinking that oh man, I'm a horrible person, but that's just a thought. It's bullshit. It's not true. And it's kind of like the monkey in the back of your mind chattering. Anyways, they teach you all these things. And one of the other things that I did like was that they had this homework where they checked in with you every single day. It was intense homework. Every single day you had to turn in, you know, my anxiety is one to five. How much? My depression is one to five. How much? So they checked into you, you know? So I liked the classes you know i took a lot of notes and all that i did everything i followed all the directions but i started to grow hopeless because i was thinking to myself okay what happens after this three months what the fuck am i supposed to do who's going to be there for me who's going to check in with me then we're in lockdown nobody gives a damn about me you know so i came home bummed out one day and i went online and the first thing on my Facebook that pops up, it was an ad for a local jujitsu gym. And there was a guy that really reminded me of the karate guy in Napoleon Dynamite with American flag pants. He's just like, do you want to change your life around? Do you want to be physically, mentally, spiritually better? Do you want to turn everything around? Do you want to be healthier? Do you want to lose some weight? Well, we got a 42 day challenge for you and it's free. Why not do it? And I was like, yeah. Why not do it? Are you like, you know, like I said before, why not try it? So I signed up for it and I remember, um, I, you know, I remember the first day that I walked into the gym, it's burned into my mind because when I walked in there, I was, a, I, w- I was a broken man. I looked like the wind drifted me into the door after passing me through sewage puddles and garbage piles. I was hunched over. I had bad hygiene. I was just, I, I I looked like I gave up. And the funny thing was, you know, they asked me, they're like, so what are you here for? What made you get interested in jujitsu? You know? And a lot of the guys there are like, bros who listen to too much Joe Rogan. And they're like, I want to be the best MMA fighter. I'm the next Khabib. I'm the next McGregor. And I was like, no, I'll be honest. I'm here because I need help mentally. I'm here for my mental health. And he's like, oh, no problem. We have a few people here. We uh, we have a kid who has tremendous panic attacks. He faints from them. We have another veteran who has PTSD. Uh, he used to get arrested for pulling his gun out anytime somebody passed his house. And now he's a lot more calmer. You know, so you're not you're not the only one. I was like, Jesus, this is for me. So now, since we're at 15 minutes, I'm going to tell you now exactly how jujitsu helps your mental health. Okay. 
Remember how I said in I was in PHP program, right? In the depression program. This is an absolute mind fuck. It's gonna, it's gonna, it blew my mind when I realized this. It made me cry from happiness. In PHP program, one of the instructors told me, they said, in order to have a happy life and in order to be steadily happy, you need balance. And there are five things that you need to constantly keep balanced, okay? Those five things are your nutritional health, your physical health, your mental slash social health, intellectual health, and spiritual health, okay? Now, this is the part where I get a little bit choked up because when I when I went when I started jujitsu, they weren't even balanced. They just were non-existent. And after I did jujitsu, all the way up a hundred percent. I I can't even. It's it's so hard to talk about because here let's go, let's go over them. Okay, nutritional health. Be, be, like before jujitsu, I was completely out of whack. I was fucking sitting at home eating ice cream, frozen pizzas. Some days I wouldn't eat anything because I was like, oh, I'm eating junk food. I better fast. So I would fast for three days. And, th- and, and you know, it would constantly keep throwing my whole body's e- equilibrium and metabolism because you eat junk food and then you fast and then you eat healthy food and then you eat junk food and it was just like all over the place no consistency so i was completely out of balance you know next thing physical health my physical health was completely out of whack because i was so depressed i didn't leave my fucking house i could have gone outside for a nice walk in the sun and you know have breathe in the air i didn't do that shit and when i went to the gym I'm an extreme person. So what I would do is I would wait until it's too much. You know, I'd have all these devastating thoughts and 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 anxious fucking ideas and and just intrusive, you know, everything building up into this ball of a fucking wasp nest and then I would decide to go to the gym and I would sprint no joke like 10 miles nonstop and then I wouldn't go again for like a month. And it didn't do shit. I would be at the gym running and I'm and tears are coming from my eyes from my panic attack. And I have to lie to people. Oh no, I, I just have an allergic reaction. Don't worry, I'm not crying. Because because you need to go regularly. You need to keep it balanced. And I wasn't. All right. Next thing. Mental and social. Obviously, my mental was not balanced. It was definitely not balanced. And I mean, I couldn't stop obsessing over, you know, these past things that happened to me and I couldn't stop, you know, and then there was all these other things like, when the fuck is my career going to kick off again? When am I going to be able to work again? When are we going to be opened up from this COVID-19 bullshit? You know, it was driving me nuts. When am I going to be able to see my friends again, the few that I have? And that's where we get into the social balance. I didn't have a lot of friends because of my mental health. I burned so many relationships and bridges. I mean, if you could animate my social connection, you know, health, it I'm like a stick figure on an island and everything around me is a wildfire. There's so many relationships that I fucked up because of my mental health. I didn't have any th- and then people are like, "Well, why don't you go to your family?" Because my family is nothing but a traumatic history. I have zero connection with them. It was so so that was completely non-existent like the others. Moving on intellectual health, right? You need that balanced. What does that mean? I didn't even think about this. This is what's crazy. I would say 90% of Americans, and I don't, I'm not shitting on America. I'm saying it because I was born here. 90% of Americans have zero intellectual health. And what I mean by that is most people, they go to high school or they go to college and then they just stop learning new things. They don't learn anything new. Even me, when I go to my uh, welding job, they teach me new new skills, new ways of doing something different, new ways of measuring something. So I'm consistently stimulating that part of my brain. When most people, they just have this chunk of egg foo young just sitting and rotting inside your skull. They're not stimulating it at all. And you need to keep that balance, whether it's reading a book or listening to an audiobook, do something to stimulate that intellectual self. And I didn't do that. That was out of balance. Lastly, spiritual balance, okay? Spiritual, you know, it's kind of a 
controversial thing to talk about in 2022 because so many people shit on religion. I will tell you the one the, the best quote that I think about religion is don't hate the band, hate the fans. And what I mean by that is there's so many bands that I've seen where the ba- the music's pretty good. They're they're pretty good as a band, but then you meet the fans and you're like, "Man, am I am I really one of those people?" Do I really fit in with these people? And that's how it is with religion. There's so many religions that have good intentions and they have great morals, but the followers fuck it up for everybody. So, but me personally, I'm a Taoist. I meditate. And spiritually, you know, that doesn't mean you have to meditate. Spiritually could be going for a walk in the park, sitting on a bench and just thinking about, man, how long has all this been here? This, this this grass coming out of the ground or these trees. Look at how resilient these trees are, you know? I mean, I went for a run one time in 10 degree weather. I almost got hypothermia in like 15 minutes. These trees, they've been here for ages and they go through the most extreme weather and they still stand strong. Isn't that beautiful? This mother earth, you know, be in touch with your spirituality and I was not in touch with that at that time. I was I didn't even want to go outside the fucking house. I wanted to be in my house in the darkness, sulking in my sadness, like it's you know, and just staring at the ceiling like it's you know, a scene from Apocalypse Now. It was it was devastating, you know? So how does jujitsu help mental health? Huh? Remember those five things, right? Nutritional, physical, mental slash social, intellectual, spiritual. Jiu-jitsu covers all of them. I was, I've never in my life cried more from happiness than I did when I was doing jujitsu because first of all, nutritional, right? The, the first day I signed up for jujitsu, they gave me a menu of, they gave me a book of recipes where they were like, all right, you know what we're doing here isn't an aerobic exercise. It's a high intensity cardio exercise and it's not just cardio. It's going to work out all of your muscles. So you don't just want to, you know, have an energy bar and then come in here. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to plop down and die. Like, like you need to have, you need to not eat food for taste, but for energy and for like as fuel. And I learned about all nutrition from there. And you know, what's crazy it was such a tough, well, I guess this will coincide. We'll, we'll go into the next balance. So nutritional is balanced. The next balance is physical. Obviously, it balances you out physically. So remember how I said about you need to eat the right things? The first week of jujitsu that I did, I was so unprepared nutritionally and physically that I threw up in my mouth twice, two different classes. I ran off the mat and into the bathroom and I and I didn't make it. I, I had to throw up into a garbage can because, you know, it's like before, even when I did exercise before, it would be like, oh, I'll go for a jog for 20 minutes or I'll go lift weights for 20 minutes, right? We're going to do arms today and then legs tomorrow. When you go to jujitsu, you're doing your whole body. You're doing your whole body and you're doing it for like three hours. So that's an exercise. That's a real exercise. Not to mention when I was on a, you know, when you're on a treadmill or when you're running or when you're lifting, what do you have to motivate you? Because there's no better motivation than, all right, if I don't choke this person out, they're going to choke me out. So you're, you're a gladiator trying to survive in the middle of the pit. And it's beautiful. And I always tell this to people who have anxiety, depression, bipolar, panic attacks. There's nothing that feels better than choking someone out or getting choked out. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling. You just, there's so much, you, you, you work so many muscles that you didn't learn. I mean, I remember the first week also, this is the last thing I'm going to say. The, la- the first week, I couldn't walk for three days because of how many muscles I was working out. My my hamstrings were completely shot. They felt they it felt like it was like veal meat. I can't even explain it. It was unbelievable. You know, and you get used to it over time, but okay, physically it's balanced. You're using all of your muscles. It was unbelievable. Mental social. Mentally, I will tell you this. 
I never felt better mentally in my life. Why? Because when you do jujitsu, it's like it brings up your confidence. You, you learn how to deal with problems. So, for example, before all of this, you know, I had, when I dealt with problems, like somebody says something disrespectful or something happens that's, that's traumatizing in life, right? Well, you go at, how do people go at those problems? They say most people go through fight or flight. I would go through freeze up. I would freeze up. When somebody said something, I would freeze up. I wouldn't know what to do. And my heart would pound full speed and I'd have a panic attack, you know, and I didn't know what to do. But in jujitsu, it's like, okay, well, this guy's going to put me, this guy's going to put me in an arm lock and an arm bar. Well, then I'm going to flip over on him and do him in a choke lock. Okay. He's going to get out of that and try and put me in a leg lock. Well, then I'm going to break his knee and you just flow. You just flow. And so it's like problems coming at you. It's like, oh, you know, well, this guy's going to say something disrespectful. Well, then I'll say something disrespectful to him. And then he's going to say something worse. Well, then I'm going to take the high road and I'm going to say something like you have no class and I'm not going to fight with somebody who's a fool, you know, and you roll with the punches. You just roll with it. And it's beautiful. It, it, It directly translates into the way you view problems in your mental life. And that's what it, that's what it taught me, you know, instead of freezing up and, and, you know, staying at home and, and dwelling in my anguish, I learned, no, you could, you, you roll with the punches. So that's what it did mentally now slash socially. Here's the part where it broke me down. It broke me down because like I said, I had burned every bridge with every person that I knew. I didn't have anybody to go to. Nobody gave a shit about me. And I remember the first day I walked in there in like to, to get started, everybody's like, yo, what's your name, man? Oh, Phil, nice to meet you, man. Why are you here? Are, are you, uh, have you ever rolled before? How many years have you rolled? Have you, do you have any martial arts? Like everybody wanted to get to know me. Everyone, I was almost like anxious because I was like, this is too good to be true. I've never seen nice people like this. It's a brotherhood. Everyone there cares about you. Everyone wants to know what you're going through. Are you, are you feeling sick? If you're missing, they'll be like, what happened? Are you okay? They, I've never felt a more sense of brotherhood than a jujitsu gym. You know, we laugh and we hang out afterwards. Sometimes we meditate, which is goes into the spiritual balance. Sometimes we go to a restaurant together or to a bar. It's, it's an amazing brotherhood. It's like having a huge family and everybody cares for each other. And one of the things that scared the shit out of me was I was the heaviest guy in my class. I was 260 pounds. And I was like, man, this is going to suck because like, I'm not going to fit in. I'm, I'm the heaviest guy here. I'm, I'm one of the oldest guys. What's going to happen? And, and you, everybody has their own place, you know, because there'll be days that, that are people like, oh, you know what? I want to roll with a heavy guy. I want to see what it's like. You know, people are constantly trying to get better at rolling. So they're like, oh, you know, today I'm going to face somebody who's skinnier than me. Today I'm going to face somebody who's more muscular than me. And so everybody has their own place. You know, everybody called me Nedviet, which is like Russian for bear, because I was like a fucking bear. I, I went, when, when I rolled around, I was like a giant. It was like slow motion, but it was rocking the whole building, you know, and, but it felt good. I felt like I fit in for once in my life. So it's a good brotherhood. Next intellectual. How does it balance intellectual? Why? Because every single class you learn a new move. And you're always learning new things. It's not just, oh, I'm going to learn. You know, every class we learned about three different new moves and we practiced them over and over and over again. And then we would have free rolling time. Well, not only are you learning new moves, but when you roll, you're improvising. So you're learning each person and what they're. So, for example, they taught me, they said, it's not about who knows the most moves at once. It's about learning three moves that you like and get and becoming an expert at them. My three moves were um, Anaconda, Guillotine, and Americana. Those are my favorite moves. And I loved it because nobody, like Anaconda, for example, nobody did that move. So anybody that I faced, 
I was going for that and I became great at it. And not only was I learning how to do it on each and every person, but people were learning from me that, oh, that's one of his moves. So I got to learn how to get out of that because that's his thing. And you learn something all the time. So your intellectual ability is getting stimulated all the time, along with your mental ability, because instead of focusing on horrible anxieties or depression, you need to be focused because if you're not, then you're going to lose this fight. Spiritual. How does it help you spiritually? I guess this kind of ties in with mentally, but after after rolling for for two, three hours, I would meditate with my fellow brothers. I would meditate. I would talk about how great I feel, talk about what things I should work on, and do even breathe Wim Hof breathing exercises together, sometimes even pray. And these were all things that stimulated me and made me feel closer with these people. As far as mentally, you know, I was just building this confidence that I've never had before in my life. I never felt that confident. And you know what? That's where I'll conclude the five things. It's our, we're already at 30 minutes, but I will tell you in the end, Jiu-Jitsu just made me feel unbelievable. It took me out of that rut. I actually was medicated before Jiu-Jitsu. In the middle of it, I, I stopped all medications because Jiu-Jitsu was my answer. I don't recommend that for a lot of people out there. And I'm remedicated now that I took a break from Jiu-Jitsu. But I will tell you, it really does help you that much. You know, there's nothing, there's no better feeling than when, you know, for example, we used to go to Buffalo Wild Wings to see all the UFC fights. And every time I go, there's bros there looking to fight people. That's just how that culture is. And I used to go and I would be like thinking in the back of my mind, what do I say? How do I come up with a comeback? But now that I was in jujitsu, I was like, first of all, jujitsu is the art of not starting a fight. Second of all, there's ways to defuse this and feel like you're the higher power. And third of all, the moment I walked through that door, I was the, the first thing that I thought was, man, that guy's staring at me. I could probably choke him out and put him in a seizure in about 10 seconds. I could, but I'm not going to. So I'm just going to wave high and be polite. And that feels great. That feel There's so much confidence in that. And not only that, but to conclude this video about mental health, okay? Think about this. If you're amazing at jujitsu, even if you're okay, if you have, think about, if you have the ability to be choked out, to have your arms, you know, locked in certain positions and take that pain, what are you not able to handle? You know, every time when I hit those mats, I was like, I'm not choking out my opponent. I'm choking out my demons. I'm, I'm fucking telling those demons, those chattering fucking thoughts in my mind. I'm telling them, you know what, bro? I'm going to fucking make you suffocate. You're, you're no longer going to exist. And that's what jujitsu does. And it also, like I said, mentally, not only does it teach you how to deal with problems, but because it's so quick, you know, you roll and then you tap out, you roll and you tap out and you, you keep trying. So it teaches you how to deal with failure, it teaches you like, I'm not, a, I, I don't have to like be depressed that something didn't work out. I just need to keep trying. Just keep moving forward. Just keep rolling. On that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one. I hope that it helps you out. I hope you join fucking jujitsu. Peace be with you and os.